have your blessed seats. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 2. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 2. The Bible says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord as his divine power has given us all things that pertains to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through this you may be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption of this world through its last. The book of Romans chapter 8 verse 14, it says this, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, the heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7, For God has not given us the spirit of what? Shout it aloud, of what? But of power and of, and of sound mind. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. In this life, you reign and rule based on knowledge. Tell your neighbor knowledge. The knowledge of God supersedes every circumstance in every life. It is said knowledge is power. And the reverse is true. The absence of knowledge is powerlessness. The absence of knowledge of God will always render you to be a defeated person. Ignorance, he said, is darkness. Tell your neighbor, ignorance is darkness. Before I say too much, this coming, uh, we have a uh, Bible marathon. Eh? Bible marathon. Please don't miss the Bible marathon. It's going to be great. We want to honor our bishop and mom who will be ministering. Amen. Amen. Hey, I'm being I'm being I'm to amungu bana swe sana. I'm being the visuri kuka karibu na wewe. Ebu ge ukio mungi ne I like your makeup. Yeah. Oh, mungi ne mwambi e iye nywele pe iko sawa. I mean, come on. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Ignorance is a deadly disease. Ignorance is deadly. Let me tell you something. You are where you are based on what you know or what you do not know. In other words, what you don't know is entirely responsible for where you are. Many people are students of ignorance in this life. I wonder when they will graduate. Many people are students of ignorance, and they are ignorant in four areas, four specific areas. Number one, they are ignorant of who they are. Many people are ignorant of, in fact, let me tell you something prophetically. Do you know the person seated next to you is a stranger to you? Even though they are familiar to you, you don't know them. And I'll tell you something, give them three years, you will need to be introduced to them afresh. I'm telling you, the person seated next to you, where would I put an eye three years from now? You will be so shocked, so shocked at what God will have done in those lives. Amen. And so people are ignorant of who they are. They don't know who they are. When you don't know who you are, you suffer identity issues. Number two, many people are ignorant of what they have. They are ignorant of what they have. The Bible has told us that his divine power, divine power has given us everything that we need for this life. 
And many people don't know this. They have buried gifts, they have buried their talents, and that is why when you look at the life of a spider, a spider does not import any resource externally to build its web. Everything that he needs or the spider needs is intact. It's intact within them. Number three, many people are ignorant of what they can do. They are ignorant of what they can do. They don't know the options that are available for them. That is why the power of God is the only option that can change your life decisively and ultimately. The power of God does not have, uh, what do you call this, debates. It does not have debates. That is why whenever Jesus encountered that situation, he never admitted his patience. Jesus dealt with sickness there and then, blindness there and then, the people with mute spirits there and then. There was no referral hospitals for Jesus. And that is why when you contact this power, there has got to be an absolute turnaround in your life. Many people are ignorant, number four, of what they should avoid. That is why the power of bondage is in the people who are ignorant of what they should avoid. What you don't avoid can be the bondage and the place where you can ultimately stay there in stagnation. And that is why ignorance manifests fear. Ignorant, ma ignorance manifests fear. Woga. You when you hang around people who come from Eastern, fear and fear are the same. You know, I, I, I greeted Munyasi in the morning. I, th I think that is where it came from. <laughs> fear becomes the power of defeat. Fear becomes the power of defeat. Ndiyo mana inasemekana ngombe angalijua nguvu alizo nazo binadamu hange mkama. It is true. It is true. It is true. Living in defeat is the main reason and the main, <laughs> actually the only reason why the purposes of God are not able to launch effectively. Defeat is the reason you never miss an excuse why things are not happening in your life despite having everything at your disposal. Let me tell you something. Every excuse you give today, five years from now, it will turn around and everybody will look at you as a joker. Every reason, however well intended, however honest, however legitimate, every reason you give today for not doing what God has called you to do, five years from now, it will turn around and the people listening will be, hey, come on, that's a joke. Tell your neighbor you cannot afford to give any excuse. Defeat is the reason God's power is never manifested in the people's lives. There is something that the knowledge of God does to an individual that makes him or her do exploits. Because Daniel 11.32 confirms that they that know their God shall be strong and they shall do exploits. When was the last time an exploit manifested in your life? Question your level of the knowledge of God. When you know God consistently, exploits is not an option. There has to be something that moves from your spirit, affecting the natural without interference of any man. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, you need to have some power. There is something that David knew about God that rendered Goliath a defeated foe without him touching him before. There is something that David knew and understood about God that when he stood in that battlefield, he only saw this guy already dead without him touching him just because of the knowledge of God. Question, when you say my life is, will never be the same again and you are afraid of a cockroach, tell me the truth. Tell me the truth. <laughs> what do you mean exactly? You know, you know. Faith paralyzes, is paralyzed by fear. 
Faith fertilizes doubt. Fear gives birth to unbelief. Fear paralyzes faith. Fear fertilizes doubt. And fear gives birth to unbelief. Believing God becomes a struggle. Fear erodes and makes you forget God's benefits. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. But when you are afraid, you forget what God did yesterday. There are people that God has done great things for them. But because of the manifestation of fear in different levels, it begins to question whether you should trust God or not. Has anybody been, has God ever done something for you that you knew this is God? Lift up your hand if you know that God has ever done something for you. Let me ask you today, what makes you not believe God for an extraordinary miracle today? I ask your neighbor today, something has got to give way. It is fear that makes mighty men of valor to chicken out and give excuses about their limitation. Consult Gideon. Gideon gives a lot of excuses. When the angel of the Lord is standing and telling him, Oh, mighty man of valor, the first thing he runs into is his limitation. Fear. Fear can make you become an, an easy defeat to your enemy. Moses was afraid of Pharaoh, yet his assignment was to represent God in Exodus chapter 3. It is fear that caused millions to die in the wilderness because of 10 jokers who could not see and remember how God had delivered them from Egypt. 10, 10 rendered other millions not to see the great land that flows with milk and honey. Let me ask you a question today. From today, what will you tell your children in the next few years when they are looking for an inheritance? You can blame the economy, you can blame the system, you can blame the environment, you can blame the lack of education, but that is a manifestation of fear. Jeremiah tried arguing with God on the same and God rebuked him and told him, listen, but the Lord said to me, say not, I am a child, for you shall go to all that I send you and whatsoever I send you to, you shall speak to them. Fear is a spirit that manifests itself in so many dysfunctions that ultimately leads to bondage. Fear is what helps demonic powers to terrorize you. Fear. Fear of unknown is what makes people to worry. You can't sleep because of fear. There are people who are afraid of what their children will turn out to become. There are people who are afraid of the economic crunch. Their businesses are unpredictable because of fear. There are people who are afraid of death, afraid of life, afraid of marriage, afraid of raising children. They are just afraid. Let me tell you, regardless of which level you are in life, fear manifests in different levels. That's the most strangest things. Fear. But today, that, has, that spirit has got to leave you today. I say that spirit has got to depart from your court today. You shall live in confidence. You shall live in courage. No wonder whenever the spirit of the Lord appeared to anyone, the first statement, fear not. Fear not. Fear not. Fear of poverty is driving many to harmful lusts and harmful ventures. But those who desire to be rich fall into the temptation, a snare into foolish and harmful lusts which drawn men into destruction and perdition. Fear has made many to run away from responsibility because of anxiety. Look at Psalm 94, 19. In the multitude of my anxieties within me, you comfort your comfort delights. 
my soul. Fear damages an individual internally and expels self-confidence. How comes you prepare adequately for an interview and when you appear before the panel you are sweating? That spirit has got to leave you today. How comes you read for an exam and then when you appear in an exam room, there is something that appears that it is as if you have never seen a book before. What is this spirit that makes you build a house and you can't sleep in the same house because you are afraid of darkness? That spirit is a liar. I say that spirit has got to leave you today. Fear damages people internally. It is fear that makes you not trust God. Businessmen and women are afraid of what will befall their businesses. Young people, fear of missing out, fear of shame, fear of disgrace is making many make strange things and do strange things because of fear. Fear of finances, fear of tomorrow, fear of failure, fear of losing everything. Fear is a spirit that can make you run mad. It is actually fear that causes people to go into depression. The reverse is true. Even the most proud people are running away from something. They are covering some insecurities because of fear. Aggression becomes their meat to intimidate. But it is just a manifestation of fear. Are you aware, Job? said in 325 Job. For the thing I greatly feared has come upon me and what I dreaded has happened to me. Let me tell you, you would rather have confidence instead of being afraid and manifest your fear. <laughs> fear has made people not to think correctly. And that is why when God says as a man thinks so is he, it is a powerful statement that you need to learn. Let me show you in Genesis, Ebu Genesis chapter 11. Siju ya taka ilikuwa kwa notes zangu. Ini by the way. Ini by the way. Tell your neighbor ini nyongesa. Let me show you something. Now the whole earth had one language and one speech. Songa mbele. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east and they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. And then they said to one another, what did they say? Come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had brick for stone and they had that name for mortar. And they said, come, let us do what? Build ourselves a city. In other words, let us hide our fear by making something to our name. And a tower whose top is where? Read it. It is where? Heavens. Let us make a name for who? For ourselves. Lest we be scattered abroad. In other words, let us try hide our fear by bringing up something that will be like a fortitude to us. Song Ambele, what happens? What happened? The Lord came down to see what? Let me ask you a, a question. Was there a, a city built? Huh? Did they build anything? No, it's, a, it's not a trick question. Did they build anything? It was where? Where was it? Are you aware as far as God is concerned, whatever you think is complete without its manifestation? No wonder as a man thinks so easy. When God came down, he saw a city because there was something that hit the heaven. Already as far as God was concerned, there was an already built up tower. But he had to come down and look at this guy. They had never started. Hakuna ploti walikuwa menunua. Hakuna mawe ilikuwa memuagwa. Hakuna 50 by 100 anywhere. It was still up here. Tell your neighbor, what is in your head? Whatever you think is so true and it is so real that it manifests without you even touching anything to launch it. But fear can resist you from doing it. Why? Now unto him who is able to do what? Exceedingly, abundantly, above what you do what? 
think or imagine. What do you think? The quality of your thoughts is a production of what your life is currently. Fear is dangerous. But thank God because we have a solution to fear. And I'll show you. I'll show you. Jesus on the cross dealt with fear decisively when he had an argument within himself in the garden of Gethsemane. He is looking at the cross. He is looking at salvation. He is looking at the body of Christ. He is looking at people being reconciled back to God, back to themselves and back to the body. He has already seen the end game before he begins. But the brutality of what he's about to go through hits him directly and he begins to be sorrowful even to the point of death. That when he began to sweat there was a heavy confusion in his mind that their blood was coming out in instead of sweat. They call it hemohydrosis. But as soon as he came to his consciousness, messianically he said, not my will but thine. Fear has got to reach a point where you say, nevertheless, not my will but thine be done. Ask your neighbor, whose will are you perpetrating? It is in Romans chapter 8 verse 39. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God. Why? You did not receive the spirit of fear, but you received the spirit of power, of love, and of sound mind. Tell your neighbor but you did not receive the spirit of fear. I don't know where you got it from. It is Psalm 23 that says, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Where did you get that fear from? It is a demonic venture that must be gotten rid of. It is in Psalm 27 verse 1 that says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? How long will you fear your boss who cannot take your life because he's responsible for your money? Why don't you just contact the power that can change the heart of that same, same boss and tomorrow you get a promotion? Ah, why are you afraid of tendering? Because people are giving bribes. Why don't you contact the power that can touch the tendering committee and favor locates you wherever you are? The devil is a liar. Isaiah 54 verse 4 Do not fear for you will not be ashamed Neither be disgraced for you will not be put to shame For you will forget the shame of your youth And will not remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 Have I not commanded you be strong and of good what? Courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. It is in John chapter 14 verse 27 that says peace I live with you. My peace I give to you not as the world gives. I, do I give to you? Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Tell your neighbor, don't fear. What occupies your mind is this. The absence of these nine things is what makes you afraid. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 to 9. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, when you have got no truth, fear is inevitable. Whatever things that are noble, when you are not walking in a noble, a noble life, fear is inevitable. Whenever things, whatever things that are just, whatever things that are pure, whatever things that are lovely, whatever things that are of good report, if there is any virtue, then if there is anything, praise God. Meditate on these things. There's something that happens in Genesis 32 that will be the basis of our prayer this morning. 
Genesis 32 is a story of this guy called Jacob. And Jacob goes through an episode that by the time he comes to himself, a lot has really happened. So Jacob, verse 30, chapter 32, so Jacob went on his way and the angels of, uh, of God met him. When Jacob saw them, he said, this is God's camp. And he called the name of that place, that name Mahanaim. Then Jacob sent messengers to he, before him to Esau, his brother, in the land of Seir, the country of Edom. And he commanded them, saying, Speak thus to my lord Esau. Thus your servant Jacob says, I have dwelt with Laban and stayed there until now. I have oxen, donkeys, flocks, and male and female servants, and I have sent... I have sent to tell my Lord that I may find favor in your sight. Verse 6 says this. When the messengers returned to Jacob saying, we have come. We came to your brother Esau and he also, and he also is coming to meet you. And 400 men are with him. What happens to Jacob in verse 7? So Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed. Just the way many are greatly distressed when the landlord is coming. Just when many are distressed when the Shylock are coming to recover. Fear can terrorize you, man. Fear can actually scoop your dignity away. He's coming to meet you. The guy is distressed and divided the people that were with him and the flocks that herds and stuff like that. Then it goes to verse 27. In verse, let, let's pick it from verse 22. And he arose, after he has done all the gimmicks, he arose that night and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his 11 sons and crossed over uh, the ford of Jabok. He took them, sent them over. This is just a manifestation of fear. The actions that Jacob is taking, they are just purely manifesting fear. Then Jacob was left alone, verse 24. Even while he's still alone, the man is afraid. And the man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched his socket, his hip, the socket of his hip and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him and he said let me go for the day breaks but he said I will not let you go unless you do what you bless me so he said to me to him what is your name he said Jacob in other words the bondage the fear was manifesting throughout the limitation that this guy had but he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but what? Israel, for you have struggled with God and with men and have done what? Have prevailed. If there is anything that we are going to do today is that we are going to pray and wrestle. Let me tell you, the fastest way to get rid of fear is to pray. Even Jesus in Gethsemane, he was there, prayed three times. Three times and even rebuked the disciples. Couldn't you tarry for an hour with me? We have got about 11 minutes just to pray. Anybody about to pray? Anybody who needs to deal with some of this fear? Anybody who needs to wrestle with this fear? Today is the day when you break free. Today is the day when you break free. I know you've been looking at your bank slip. You have been looking at your statement like this and you are afraid of what can become of you. Let me tell you, there is a higher power that once you contact it, it can turn around everything. Amen. Let us be up on our feet. And let me tell you what we are going to do. It's a very simple thing. Very simple thing. 
The wrestling that this guy had was not only classical, but it ended up changing the destiny and the destinies of so many. Just one man finding freedom. If you can find freedom today, I don't know what would you do if you knew that you would not fail. What would you do if you knew that whatever you are doing will not be scattered? Trust you me, you will dream big. What would you do if you knew that it will not fail? What you are afraid of is purely also afraid of you. It's just that it has given you the consequences of your fear and it makes you chicken out. But not after this service today. Today you are walking out here courageous. Courageous. You cannot fear sickness and disease. There is healing in this house. There are people here who are afraid of getting born again. They are afraid because they don't want to live their, their lifestyles. Yes, Yes, Genesis 32 Then Jacob asked him saying Tell me your name I pray and he said Why is it that you ask about my name and he blessed him there so Jacob called that place the name Peniel Every time you see the name like this Rehoboth Peniel Jireh, Shalom, Nisi, all those who are encounters, all those who are encounters. For Jacob, he called it Peniel. What is your encounter today? What will you call it? Lift up your hands and begin to pray. Confess that fear right now. It must leave you. That fear must leave you now. That fear must leave you. The fear. Fear that your business will go down. Fear that your children will make wrong decisions. Fear, fear must live today. You've got to walk in freedom. Fear of getting married. Who will marry me and my years have gone? That is fear. We rebuke that fear right now. Fear, fear, fear of not getting a job. Fear of not making it in life. Fear that you will die because of sickness. We rebuke that fear right now. We rebuke that spirit right now. Fear that your children will go down the drain. We rebuke that fear right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus, Apokasa, Lepros Tebranash Tebranai, receive courage today. Receive courage today. Receive courage today. Receive the spirit of power. Receive the spirit of love. Receive the spirit of sound mind. In the name of Jesus Christ, you shall not be confused again. You shall not be worried again. You shall get your sleep tonight. You shall get your peace in the office. You shall get your peace in marriage. I rebuke that fear right now off of your life. I arrest that spirit in the name of Jesus. Let it leave you now. Let it leave you now. Receive the spirit of power. Receive the spirit of love. Receive the spirit of sound mind. Somebody pray, pray for courage. Pray for courage. Courage to confront situations. Courage to stand out. Courage to be counted. Courage to be an example. Courage to be an example. Receive the spirit of courage today. 
that spirit of fear must leave you today. You will sleep tonight. I arrest that demonic power that has caused you to fear witchcraft. I arrest that spirit right now that causes you to fear driving at night. I arrest that spirit right now that causes you not to parent your children in the ways of God. I arrest that spirit right now. La proko satabrana mashatabrokase. Le proko setebrenegande. La stoprakase telebrenegande. Receive the spirit of power. Receive the spirit of love. The spirit of sound mind. It is in Psalm 34. That will end here. Psalm 34 says this I will bless the Lord at all times, His praise shall continually be in my mouth. The fastest way to deal with fear is to have a praise in your system. Have a praise in your system. When things are going wrong, praise the Lord. When things are not working, praise the Lord. When things are going haywire, praise the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt the name together, his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from what? All my fears. I sought the Lord and he heard me. Tell your neighbor, the Lord has heard me and has delivered me from all my fears. Ah, this poor man cried out, verse 6, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. If there is anything that I will leave you today, the Lord has heard you. The Lord has saved you from all your troubles. Give the Lord a hand clap offering. Let me tell you something, one last thing. The fastest way to deal with fear is prayer, praise, prayer, praise, prayer, praise. Praise your way into victory. Praise your way into a breakthrough. Praise your way into a manifestation of God's power. Amen. Now I want you to hold your hand, the, hand, your, the neighbor's hand. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, I am going to outshout you. Because the last time I heard people shouting, the walls of Jericho fell. The last time I heard people shouting, there was victory in their army. And right now, right here, I'm going to make a shout that will be a thunder to all my fears. One, two, three, shout! I can't hear you, sir!